Tonight we welcome Chris Bethel. He's a familiar name to many. Millwall fan, man and boy, author, club historian and the driving force behind Docker's Day since it was first unveiled in 2006. Chris, welcome. Tell us what is happening this Saturday at the Den. Well, we've got the 12th Docker's Day. It's 12 years now, long time. Um, it's the uh, 2000 and 2001 uh, Division 2 champions. Uh, one of the reasons I had it this year, picked that team to come with the Dockers, was because of Tim Cale coming back and then might not get another chance of uh, actually having him on the Dockers day and Neil Harris being there, Dave Livermore, Scott Fitzgerald, I had four to start with so it made my task easier and That's if I cool. needed to get hold of anyone uh, I would probably, they had, would have had the phone numbers. But I've got um, some good players coming, Paul Moody, Robbie Ryan, Richard Sadlier, Ronnie Ball, Stuart Nevercott, Christoph Kinnett's coming over from Belgium. Fantastic. Mark McGee wasn't going to come two weeks ago because Barney had Forest Green. But since then he's been sacked and he phoned me up and said, oh, guess what, I'm coming. <laughs> so I've got Mark McGee coming, the manager. Right. Tony Warner's come over from India. He's coaching in India. Right. And his team won the league. And he phoned yeah. me from the airport. Said, I'm on my way over. So that's a... And uh, I must say about Stuart Nevercott, he runs a team, he's a manager of a team. And they were playing Saturday. He phoned up the league and got it changed to the Friday night so that he could come to Dockers Day. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, unbelievable, isn't it? And uh, as usual, Terry Bridgley present yeah. the medals because he's dead. Docker, his brother's a Docker, so Terry Bridgley, another legend, and they all look forward to seeing him as well. So he'll be there as well with the, the squad. Of, and uh, yeah, so it's looking good. Plenty of players. What about Dockers? How many of them we likely to? Uh, right, see we've day? got twenty Dockers. Uh, a lot of them the usual there's about half a dozen that usually come to most of them because they they do things in the background for me uh, like Brian Grover he, he yeah. works at the actual Dockers Museum so he comes because he knows the Dockers and he recommends Dockers to me but um, and we've also got the uh, the, the, the champion rower on the, on the Thames uh, Warren White who done a, a bit in the program last year his family comes uh, and then we get a load of new faces because we put the advert in the Suffolk News and in the programme and uh, we've got a few new faces there as well that we're going to meet and uh, we'll probably hear some some stories of what they got up to in the docks <laughs> <laughs> it must it, it must take one hell of a, a, a job to pull it all together when do you, when do you start making it happen then Right, I'll start in November. I'll work it out in pre-season who I'm going to have. Yeah. I have to start in November. The reason being is because if I can't get enough players, I've got to start again with, with an, a different team. Yeah. So, if, you know, so you have to go early. You can't go right at the spur of the moment. You wind up with just three players, then you haven't got an event. So I'll start about November, and then I'll start getting, after Christmas, start getting the invites out, uh, give them plenty of notice. So, really, I'll be pre-season. I mean, straight after this Dockers Day, people will be saying to me, who you got next year? I'd imagine. But, you know what I mean? Sometimes it, it just comes to me. But this, this Tim Cale was this one, because, yeah. you know, it was is he coming, ain't he coming? And then I got a little tip off here, he is. And I thought, well, it's got to be, I've got to get that to because it's the only time, isn't it? You know, it's not going to You were in the know before the rest of us, eh? Well, you <laughs> that, well, 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 I'm still in contact with Rhino. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And, but stuff. I, was sitting, I was sitting, as it happens, I was sitting with, it was amazing because about fr two, three weeks before that, I was sitting with Joe Dolan up in the press box. Yeah. Stephen Reid was there, and oh. Paul Moody. So I, had, I looked around, I said, yeah, we've got to get an event together. And that was with, before even Tim Cale. And they went, yeah, that would be a great idea. And then Joe Dolan said, oh, I think he might, be, he might be there. And I thought, well, that's, that's enough. You know, once he said that, you know, I thought, yeah, something's, something's in the air. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and we signed him. So, yeah, so it's all worked out, really, for, for me, and for Dr. Wonderful. Day. So. Wonderful. Uh, Chris, so what we what we likely to see um, on the pitch then on uh, Saturday before the game? Right. Um, well, what I usually do is they meet. They they come to the club at eleven o'clock. Yeah. So they I take them up the press lounge at eleven o'clock. In the meantime, we're there at half past eight, nine o'clock in the morning. We put up an, a photographic exhibition of the docks and of the players. We do both. Right. We try and work out a DVD for the screen. 
and we just generally work out what we're going to do before they all turn up at 11 o'clock. They turn up at 11 o'clock, they have a meet and greet. At half past 11, we take them on a ground tour, Barry Rowan and um, Les, Les Briley and uh, Billy Neal, Jimmy Carter. So there will be some more, even more players, and then we'll meet up. We're going a little quick ground tour. They come back at 12 o'clock do all the interviews for the uh, Lions World and for the programme and for the press uh, have something to eat then we take them down to the blue bus so that they meet all the supporters that are in the car park have their photos done I march them onto the pitch about half past two about twenty to three we start doing the medals uh, start getting the photographs done three o'clock back up to the uh, dockers go off to the box yeah. and uh, players go up to the uh, executive and uh, we watched we, we watched the game. It's quite full on for about four hours. But, uh, well, it, sound, it sounds like it's quite full on from about eight or nine o'clock in the morning. Never mind. Oh yeah, yeah. Go oh, it is, yeah, yeah. You got your uh, work out, out there. That's so it, the yeah, big one yeah. for the fans then, Chris, is um, the blue bus. Should they get to the blue bus on time? Really? Oh yeah, they, yeah. We we have them at the blue bus. I mean, we. we, we they, we get surrounded I and mean, when we get the blue bus we have to put a fence up now yeah. originally we didn't we didn't think it was going to be that bad but we didn't yeah. realise like we just couldn't get no photos done and so we put a fence up and uh, they do they sign the photos they get the uh, uh, they sign their, the photos that the uh, fans have got their photos taken so they, they, they do meet a man shakes and talking and everything but um, it, sometimes it can get a bit chaotic because it, it, everyone's comes up uh, they've got half hour so you can yeah. imagine for half hour it's just one big rush just go, uh, go. I think the players love it I mean when they come away they go oh wow well, you know <laughs> well it's, it's yeah. nice that they're remembered really isn't it and, and yeah. I think that must that must uh, bode well for them oh I, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I think the I think the fans will look forward to that and uh, yeah. I think it's a fantastic job that you do uh, Chris every year oh, 12 years on uh, yeah. I hope Millwall were looking to give you a long service medal, so <laughs> uh, I think that, that needs yeah. to be put out there. But um, so all the fans out there, uh, be down at the Blue Bus. What time was yeah. that again? Well, the Blue Bus, we get them down there, start marching down there about quarter to two, so two o'clock they would definitely be down yeah. there. Uh, but the, what you want is the fans in the ground at 20 to three, 20 to three to cheer them on yeah. and see them and, you know. Don't right. be stuffy on. Uh, get your drinks after. Watch this, and then go and get your drink. <laughs> that sounds good to me. So you heard it here from Chris Bessel first. Be there two o'clock at the bus, twenty to three. Get out uh, on your seat and welcome on onto the pitch. It's going to be it. a great day once again. I've enjoyed it for years now, and I couldn't remember how many years it was initially. Anyhow, that was Chris <laughs> Bethel. I'm Eamon no one likes us talking but we're talking today to one of Mill's greatest fans Chris Bethel thank you thanks a lot <laughs> bye for now bye <laughs>